Okay, folks, we will call our meeting to order. And the first item on our agenda is our land acknowledgement. And I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki and the district of Sabag and Agadee, the ancestral. Next, we will have the uh, approval of or amendments to the agenda. So moved. Moved by Councillor Green, seconded by, sorry, I didn't see who it was seconded by. Yeah. Councillor Musa. Councillor Musa. Any discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. Next will be the approval of the minutes of May 17th, 2022 Council Policy Meeting and the May 25th, 2022 Regular Meeting of Council. Mm -hmm. Moved by the Deputy Warden. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion has carried. Now we will move to correspondence for information. <laughs> You've had this in front of you, councillors. Is there any item there that anyone wishes to bring forward or have further discussion on? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to correspondence for decision. And the first one there is a late addition. Um, put on by Cheryl Lee for me because I was afraid I might forget it to raise it in my warden's report. Um, the Atlantic Mayor's Congress is, a, is an organization that East Hants historically belonged to and then the last uh, term or so um, the warden at the time didn't have the time to commit to going to it. I had some discussions with uh, fellow folks at, at FCM and I've been told that um, it's, a, it, it's a worthwhile group in their opinion and uh, Mayor Blair of Colchester has issued an invitation for me to attend the next meeting. Um, I wouldn't do that without council's blessing and you know depending on what I find out there I might well be coming back and suggesting that we reestablish our membership in that group or, or not. Um, so I asked to have this brought forward to see if council is uh, willing for me to accept the invitation and accept the next meeting, which is in Shediac, New Brunswick. Uh, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Warden. Um, I think organizations like this are taking on a much more prominent role as a lot of services continue to be downloaded from provincial organizations to municipal units and having a united front at the uh, at the mayor and wardens uh, level, uh, also understanding on, on an Atlantic wide, also what's happening within our provinces is, is important. So I would move that uh, that you attend this or, or approve, that council approve uh, you going to attend this uh, this this meeting in Shediac in the 25th to 27th of August. We have a seconder. Second. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Questions. Questions been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion has passed unanimously. Next item is the letter from the Halifax East Hants 4-H Council Trophy Committee regarding a trophy donation. The correspondence is in front of you. Um, East Hants, uh, I'll just add a little 4-H information. Uh, East Hants is served by this particular group as well as the Hants County group. It's 
kind of split in the, in the middle, so. It seems to be a small ask. I guess I would ask staff, you know, where funding could come from if we were to do this. Through you to the chair, uh, or sorry, through you to council, um, it is a fairly modest amount and it could be covered under the general government grant program. It doesn't necessarily fit within the other grant programs, but um, it certainly would fit in there, sort of in alignment with um, the donation that is provided to the Hans County Exhibition. So what is your wish? Councillor Perry. Um, oh, just some a question on this. Um, have we been approached by the other 4-H group in the area for a similar donation? Through your staff warden. Well. Through you to council, uh, no, we have not been approached by any other 4-H group for a similar request. Okay. And I would just add that they are simply asking for a donation and they tell that uh, one trophy, uh, a small trophy is around $25. We could donate 25 we could donate $100, and they could use it as, they, as the need was in their, in their program. And I believe, through, through your staff warden, that we do 250 to the Hans County Exhibition, is it? It's $500. $500. Okay. But that's not for 4 H. That's not for 4 H. but that's for, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the similar grant. Um, I would be willing to move the motion uh, or sorry, I'd rather be willing to make a motion to donate one hundred dollars to the four H, the four count or four H program for uh, trophies in the Halifax East Hans four H group. Second. Okay, seconded by Councillor Green, um, Councillor Rhino. Yes, my question is, will that be in a form of a grant? Because uh, uh, is not my understanding that we do not make donations. Or do we? <laughs> so they would have to apply for something in the grant form, or through you to council um, under the grant program, the general gov government grant program, they do actually fit the criteria for that. So the letter in writing that they provided is actually their application for that grant. So it does fit that program. Okay. Any further discussion? Question. Questions been called, we'll go to the vote. And the motion is passed unanimously. And that concludes correspondence for decision. Next, we will go to Councillor Green for the Fire Advisory Committee report. As soon as I get the microphones back on. Thank you, Warden. The committee held its regular quarterly meeting on June 2nd, 2022. The following motions are coming forward as a result of that meeting. Item one, recognition for support to the fire service. Chief Daphne nominated Pay Dirt Auto for recognition of the vehicles they provide to the Nine Mile River Volunteer Fire Department to train extrication on. The Fire Advisory Committee recommends to Council the council recognized Pay Dirt Auto for providing vehicles for extrication training to the Nine Mile River Volunteer Fire Department. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by, I believe it was Councillor Hibb. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Item number two, fire department re-registrations. Registrations have been received from all 14 fire departments that service East Hance and were attached to the agenda. All forms are complete and all departments qualify for registration under the MGA. Committee members had no concerns with the registrations. The fire advisory committee recommends to council that council approve the annual re-registration for all fire departments servicing East Hance. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. <clears throat> Waiting for two people to vote, folks. 
one person to vote, folks. And that person, no, it wasn't me. I'd already voted. We seem to have a problem with let's restart the vote. We seem to be not recording all the votes. Uh, this time we have ten votes and it is approved unanimously. Item three, firefighter long service recognition. Mr. Clarkson provided an update on the program to the committee. Council approved a long service recognition program in February 2022. At a subsequent East Hans Fire Service Association meeting, it was agreed that all active firefighters eligible would be recognized as opposed to those achieving 10 or 15 years of service on a go forward basis. The number of eligible members has been received from most departments and the municipalities in the process of sourcing the medals. The committee agreed awarding a medal for 10 years of service and a bar for 15 years of service is appropriate. As chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. Uh -huh. The adoption of the report. All those in favor? Uh, contrary, motion is carried. Okay, moving along, we will go to corporate and residential services report. Uh, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on the 21st of June, 2022 in Council Chambers. The following motions are coming forward as a result of that meeting. Year-end memo. Part of the year-end preparations for audit is the analysis of the Municipality of East Hans operating and capital funds. Several year-end entries are required to prepare the financial statements. These are unpredictable and or the exact amounts are unknown at budget time. The Corporate Residential Service Committee recommends to Council that Council approve the year-end adjustments to the operating funds as presented in the 2021-2022 year-end adjustments reports dated June 15, 2022 and presented on June 21, 2022 be accepted and approved. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Item number two, Council email disposition. The municipality does not have a formal exit process for councillors and what happens to their email accounts following the counselor's exit has been inconsistent. The current practice when a counselor's term ends is for their email account to be shut down and emails de deleted. The recent, re 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 the recent recognition of two counselors midterm has prompted staff to look at how we manage former counselor email accounts and consider including this as part of the municipality's information management plan. The Corporate and Residential Service Committee recommends to council the council support the addition to the administrative record and information policy that will state once a counselor's term ends, an automatic reply is sent with the messaging that lets the resident know the person they are trying to reach is no longer a counselor and providing the name of the person that will be handling the correspondence. Incoming emails will also be forwarded to the person responsible for the mailbox to address. After six months, the assistant municipal clerk will review the former counselor's mailbox and retain any emails that are official records. Once that has been done, the mailbox will be deleted. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Moving on, fire service medal update. As requested by Council, the Director of Corporate Services brought forward Council's Question to the March meeting of the East Hans Fire Service. The Fire Service decided that the preference for this award program would be to award medals retroactively. Staff have asked the fire departments to provide the number of members 
eligible for either the 10 or 15 year reg recognition, and there are approximately 320 members eligible. The Corporate and Residential Services Committee recommends that Council approve the award for a medal for 10 years of volunteer service and 15, and, uh, sorry, and a bar for 15 years of volunteer service. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Questions. Questions from call. <coughs> Waiting for one person to vote, folks. And the vote is in and has passed unanimously. Fire service funding policy. The municipality of East Hands provides several different types of funding opportunities and services for fire departments within its boundaries. In consultation with staff, the fire service funding policy is being updated to include four types not previously included and three services not covered by any other policy and updates to language and CPI to ensure accuracy. The Corporate Residential Services Committee recommends that Council approves the proposed updates to the Fire Service Funding Policy dated June 2022 and last updated October 2016. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Questions been called. And the motion has passed unanimously. And I think, uh, Council, Councillor Perry, we missed uh, number four. Oh, I did, didn't I? Sorry about that. Thank you. There's 11 here, so. Hospitality policy. The municipality of East Hans does not currently have a Municipal Governance Act mandated hospitality policy. This policy outlines what hospitality expenses are eligible for reimbursement in circum circ circumstances. It also outlines the the reception of gifts from the public and other organizations. The Municipal Government Act requires Council to pass a hospitality policy. The Corporate Residential Services Committee recommends that Council enact the new Council Hospitality Policy dated June 2022. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay. Questions been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion has passed by a vote of nine to one, with Councillor Rhino voting nay. Next up, flag policy. Flags are a common tool to promote diversity and pride within communities. Changes to this policy contribute significantly to the municipal strategic plan. Staff have, directed, have drafted an update to the municipal flag policy to fly the Mi'kmaq Grand Council flag permanently and to create a flag rising schedule attached for the flags of cultural community and special interest groups within each hands. The plan to increase the visual representation of diverse groups in our community will require two new flag poles. The Corporate and Residential Services Committee recommends that Council allocate $20,000 from general government other reserves to install two new flag poles in front of the Lloyd E. Matheson Center. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion? Deputy Warden. Just a question through you to staff. Is the municipality responsible for buying the, the flags or are they being provided by an outside agency? CAO. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The, if, a, if a group were to approach council and want us to fly their flag and it goes through the process as outlined, um, there is, they can give us the flag. Um, the initial purchase of flags for the schedule that was attached to the committee agenda. Uh, we do have either already have the flags or we do have budget within that $20,000 to purchase what's required. Um, some of those, um, yeah, I guess that was it. So if council accepts a recommendation to fly somebody's flag and they feel that we should buy the flag, council at the time can make that decision um, and there'll be some money in the budget to accommodate those. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rhino. Well, I'm all for showing support for diversity and diversity itself, but I'm not, not at a cost of $20,000 for flag poles. It's a very poor time with uh, the state of the economy and the way it's at. 
And uh, I do do believe that uh, I was put here to watch the uh, dollars. And uh, for me, this is uh, uh, this is not uh, what they would accept. So I'll be voting against it. Any further discussion? Questions. Questions been called. And the vote has passed by a vote of nine to one with Councilor Rhino voting nay. The Corporate Residential Services Committee also recommends that Council approve the proposed updates to the municipal flag policy dated June 2022. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councilor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. And the vote is uh, the motion has passed by a vote of nine to one with Councilor Rhino voting nay. Number seven, lot one seven four F laterals. During the earlier expansion of the Elmsdale Business Park, a number of lots were created without service laterals. Lot one seventy four F was one of those lots that require servicing to enable commercial development. And in March of twenty twenty, Municipal Council approved the cost of servicing this lot to be funded from the proceeds of lot sales. Lot 174F was sold at the full service lot price in September 2020, and the current owner is, pro is proceeding with developing this lot and has submitted the cost to service the lot. The Corporate Residential Service Committee recommends to Council that Capital Project 22-004 Service Laterals Elmsdale Business Park be increased to $55,050 and that the total project cost be funded from the lot sales special reserve. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by the deputy warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. The question has been called. <coughs> and the motion is passed unanimously. Number eight, UNIAC Business Park pricing. To accommodate the sale of lots in the phase two expansion of the UNIAC Business Parks, an updated UNIAC Business Park lot pricing and availability document is required. The Corporate and Residential Services recommends to Council that the UNIAC Business Park lot pricing and availability document dated June 13th, 2022 be approved. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? The question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Number nine, develop driving additional resource needs. Development is driving the need for more development related regulatory oversight and technical engineering review and control. The development being experienced across municipality along with the approved capital plan will require additional resources to responsibly execute our growth over the next 10 to 15 years. The all hands on deck approach in each of these departments is not enough to keep up with the development demand and the capital project oversight. The Corporate and Residential Service Committee recommends the Council approve $220,000 in the 2022-2023 operating budget for the establishment of one permanent development con control position and one permanent project engineering position. These positions in 2022-2023 will be funded through a transfer from the General Contingency Reserve if required and shall be included in the 2023-2024 draft operating budget for council consideration. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Councillor Rhino. This, uh, um, I guess uh, I'm not going to support the motion and it's on a principle that three short months after we've been doing uh, budget that now we're, now we're uh, increasing staff. You know, I heard the explanation at the executive committee, but uh, for me, it's uh, it's just too much of an ask uh, three months outside of of our budget process. So I will not be supporting the move. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Questions been called. And the motion is passed with a vote of nine to one with Councillor Rhino voting nay. 
Polling District Review. The fourth report on the Polling District Review discussion resulted from Phase 1 public consultation provided a judicial scan of voters per district and the geographical size of districts in comparable municipalities and made a recommendation on the size of council. The Corporate and Residential Service Committee recommends to council. The council set the size of council at 11 and directs staff to prepare draft district boundaries. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Hamm. Is there any discussion on the motion? Questions. Questions been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. And finally, in camera contractual issue. During an in camera session, committee members received a staff report regarding contractual and land issues, and councillors had their questions answered by staff. As chair of committee, I move the adoption of this report. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, contrary, motion has carried. So next up, we will go to infrastructure and operations. Councillor Musa. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on June 21st, 2022 in Council Chambers. The following motion is coming forward as a result of that meeting. 2023 system assessment report budget required. In May 2022, Nova Scotia Environment notified water utilities through the Municipal Public Work Association of Nova Scotia MPWANS that they are required to complete a 2023 system assessment report for drinking water supplies by April 1st, 2023. The last system assessment was required 10 years ago, which was completed for the regional system in April 2013, where the new water treatment plant in Shubenacadie has just, had just come into service. A renewed system assessment for that location was not required. The Infrastructure and Operation Committee recommends to Council that Council approve 45,000 in budget to complete the provincially mandate 2023 system assessment report to be funded from water utility accumulated surplus. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Tingley. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. As a chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Second. Seconded by Councillor Perry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion has carried. Moving along, we will go into Planning Advisory Committee. Councillor Green. Thank you, Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on June 21st, 2022 in Council Chambers. The following motions are coming forward as a result of that meeting. Item 1, Scott Blois rezoning to Village Core, 236 Highway 214. The municipality has received an application from Mr. Scott Blois to redesignate and rezone a property in Elmsdale to enable a multi-unit dwelling. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that Council direct Council give first reading to redesignate and rezone property at 236 Highway 214 Elmsdale to Village Core and authorize staff to schedule a public hearing. As chair of the committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Uh, Deputy Warden. Uh, I'm going to change the wording in the motion to uh, recommend to council, council give first reading or direct council. Does that yes. seems to be ambiguous? Thank you. Any further discussion? Questions, Questions been called. <coughs> One more vote, folks. And the motion is passed unanimously. Item number two, Fathom Wilkins, amendments to MPS to extend serviceable boundary. The municipality has received an application from Fathom Studio representing Clark Wilkins. The application seeks to amend the serviceable boundary to include the application property and an amendment to the zoning on the property to enable a higher density residential and also some commercial space. 
The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that Council refuse the application by Fathom Studio and Clark Wilkins to extend the serviceable boundary and enable the mixed use development. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Questions, Questions been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Item three, Raymar, re redesignation and rezoning in Mount Uniac. The municipality has received an application from Raymar Developments Limited to redesignate and rezone a portion of, of a property in East Uniac to enable a subdivision containing single unit dwellings. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that Council authorize staff to schedule a public information meeting to consider a proposal for PID number 4515704 to change the designation and zone from rural use to country residential and an 800 meter mail out be sent to the residents. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by the deputy warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Questions. Questions been called. <coughs> One more person left to vote, folks. And the motion is passed unanimously. Item four, plan update background paper, agricultural report from the Agricultural Advisory Committee. Oh, excuse me. As part of the community plan update, the Agricultural Advisory Committee has been tasked with proposing agricultural land use policies and regulations for the future plan portion of the municipality. The AAC had their first meeting on June 8th of 2021. Since this date, the committee has held five meetings and have determined a method of regulating agricultural land in the future planned area. The Agricultural Advisory Committee recommends that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that all active agricultural land in the future planned area be designated Agricultural Reserve AR designation and be zoned Agricultural Reserve AR zone. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. We have a seconder. And seconded by Councillor Musa. I would ask the Deputy Warden if he would take the chair. Uh, question on this one. Um, would this zoning be the same as the current agricultural zoning in the current planned area? Uh, through you uh, to the uh, Deputy Warden, yes. It would be the same AR zone that we use in the current planned area. Thank you. I'll give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Questions. Questions been called. And the motion is passed by a vote of seven to three with Councillor Rhino, Councillor Garden Cole, and myself voting nay. The Agricultural Advisory Committee recommends that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that side and rear lot line setback requirements for intensive livestock structures be reduced to 10 meters where the adjoining property or properties are in common ownership. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Rhino. Just a question through you to staff. Okay, so today they own they own about them budding properties. And what happens if you know they go to sell and they lose that setback, right? And so I, I, I just come to me like that's great. I, I, the motion's all right, but if that land is ever sold again, then they lose the setback. And that could pose a problem for down the road. Through you, uh, Madam Warden, it, it could, but I guess at least in that case, it's an existing circumstance when the property would be sold. So it's a buyer beware situation, I guess, that there is an intensive livestock operation there. Okay, uh, yes, I understand that, but it just seems that uh, that maybe wasn't wasn't thought out and discussed at the time. So, thank you. 
Any further discussion? Question. Question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. The Agricultural Advisory Committee recommends that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that lands with Class II soils have the same land use policies and regulations as the Agricultural Reserve designation and zone, with provisions added to allow for residential and commercial developments along existing road frontages and changes to the Agricultural Impact Study requirements when applying for a development agreement, as described in the AAC report dated June 14, 2022. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Head. Is there any discussion? Councillor Musa. Uh, I'm not in favor of this one. Like, if, if it was going to be used for agriculture, it would have been used, but so if they want to use it for something else, it's going to go way down in price if we rezone it. So uh, I'm not, not in favor of this one. No one else, I'd ask the deputy warden to take the chair. Similar to Councillor Musa, I am definitely not in favor of this. This um, is not a burden that was placed. I was on this council when we brought agricultural zoning into the currently zoned area. This was not a burden that was placed on that part of the municipality. Um, it simply was not. And that part of the municipality, whatever class two soils might be there, was free to develop if it wasn't used for agricultural land, and I assume it has done so. Uh, to put a burden like this on the much more rural part of this municipality seems to me to be radically unfair. And as Councillor Musa said, you know, just because the soil is class two, if it's not owned by folks who are farming folks, and it will probably never be farmed, it just seems overly restrictive. Um, I, I just, I just can't support this. I, I think of all of the, all of the things that we bring in in the part of the municipality that's currently zoned and when we bring new things in, existing uses are grandfathered. Well, we're bringing a whole new zone into an area of the municipality that did not ask for it. And uh, to suddenly tell people that the land which they own, which may have been in their family for generations, can't be used for anything but agricultural use when perhaps these folks are not and never will be farmers. I can think of situations where land ownership, whatever the soil classification, might be in ownership of, uh, of parents and at some point in time will be in ownership of another generation who may want to develop a campground who may want to create some type of uh, rural affordable housing so people can stay in the area. And we're going to tell them, no, you can't do this. And uh, when the rural councillors had a meeting with planning staff to discuss the scope of what was going to be put in, we said, the folks haven't asked for this, they don't want this. So we want to comply with the provincial directive and do what we have to do, but that's all we want to do. We don't want to go, you know, above and beyond. We did not do this when we brought agricultural zoning into the other part of the municipality, and I feel it's an unfair burden to put on the folks on the more rural side of the municipality to restrict the use of their land, which, in most cases, if it's not already being farmed, the chances are it's not going to be. So I would respectfully ask council to, uh, to defeat this particular motion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Warden. Does the director want to comment at this time? Thank you, Mr. Deputy Warden. Um, 
can uh, put forward the, the policies it's comfortable with. Uh, the reason I think this is here, two reasons. Um, one, when we talk to provincial staff and look at the Statement of Provincial Interest on Agricultural Land, it talks about preserving good soils for future agricultural development. And as for it never being used, well, between the 2016 and 2021 census, more than 4,000 acres of land in East Hance came into agricultural production. So there is land that's uh, not currently being used that is coming into production. So I guess for those two reasons, staff suggested this to the committee and they accepted the recommendation. Thank you, Director. Yes, Warden. Uh, respectfully, I would say that the land would not have to be zoned agricultural to be brought into agricultural protection if the landowner so desired. And I would just add to my earlier comments that currently in the zoned area, if there is land which has been used for agriculture and, uh, and the owner wishes to develop it, that owner has always had the opportunity to swap land out. If the owner took five acres for development and could replace the five acres of agricultural land with other land that was deemed as suitable as what was being removed, that was allowed and it allowed development to proceed. By bringing something like this in, that opportunity is not there in the rural area because you've already restricted all this, you know, other land that you might have been able to swap out for your agricultural land. So I just, I don't think it's necessary at this, this time. I don't think the pressure is there at this time to require it. And I don't think, I don't think we have to take giant steps with this. Um, I think we can take small steps and introduce the zoning and uh, you know down the road if if the need is is discovered you know you, you can make changes then but right now to introduce this brand new zone and suddenly tell people that land they've owned for many many years is now worth a fraction of what it was used before the municipality brought this in just it doesn't seem necessary to me and it doesn't seem fair. Thank you. Any further comments from the director? Um, just uh, in terms of the restrictions in the zone, it, it I mean, it was designed through Mr. Uh, Deputy Warden not to be as restrictive as the IR zone. So that's why um, within 300 feet of existing roads, development can happen. And also the development agreement provision would allow some of the things that have been discussed, like uh, residential development by development agreement. Um, there is a study that has to be done, but it's not as intensive as the one that has to be done in the existing AR zone. The, the one that has to be done in the existing AR zone requires you to look at the actual soil type, whereas in the AR2 zone, it, it wouldn't. You would just have to look at really two questions. One would be, um, is the land necessary for farming? So kind of a agrologist, uh, opinion on the overall region and um, would it interfere with the existing agriculture around it? So those those would be the two questions that would have to be asked before development could happen on that land. So this is to preserve agricultural land? The, the AR2 is on land. <clears throat> I'll get, yes, Madam Morton, go ahead. Oh, just respectfully, I don't feel that uh, I don't feel that the landowner should be forced to jump through those kind of hoops at this particular time. I, I simply don't feel that it is necessary or warranted. Thank you. Any other comments, Director? No, that's good. Okay, thank you. I'll give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. There's uh, Eli Moose awaiting. Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. I think you covered most of what I want to say, but uh, I think we are here because the province wants us to, put, to introduce zoning, and we're going too aggressive all of a sudden. Somebody could go to bed who could, can do anything with his land, wake up the next day, he couldn't do anything with it. So I think for those lands, an RU zone for now is something that they could live with, and if the province pressure us more, probably in six years, five years, whatever. We can always go more, more aggressive, but if we go aggressive all of a sudden, then everybody who comes to rezone, like we had an RU zone that was never used, 
and they want to change it, and we gave them hell to do it. So I think I think Arizona for now is something reasonable. It will allow agriculture. Uh, is there anything in Arizona about the setback from other properties? Through you, um, Deputy Ward, or, uh, Warden. Um, yes, uh, there are setbacks in every zone. So the uh, if you're talking about the intensive livestock, there would still yes. be set, the same setbacks in the rural use zone that you would have in the AR zone. So so now the, the AR zone that we approved to be 60 meters is already um, existent in the RU zone or not? Uh, through Madam Warden, I, I'd have to go back and look at the draft. I'm not 100% sure we actually did transfer that, that new provision to the uh, RU zone. Um, we'll have to check. Yeah, thank you. So any further discussion? Question. Did you wish to wait to hear the director's answer before the vote, Councillor? No, it's, it's, it's OK. Yeah. OK. The question has been called. And the results are in, and the motion has been defeated by a vote of eight votes to two. With counts with uh, Deputy Warden Mitchell and Councillor Tingley voting in favor, and everyone else voting against. The Agricultural Advisory Committee recommends that Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that active agricultural lands identified on the East Hans Plan Update Future Planned Area Agricultural Mapping App be used as the agricultural reserve designation on the. G Flum maps and the Agricultural Reserve AR zone on the LUB maps. As chair of the committee, I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Once again, I will ask the deputy warden to take the chair. Having been present in these uh, chambers when the original agricultural zone was brought in place for the currently zoned area, we didn't exactly get that right. It was based on ALIP mapping, I believe, at that time. And the plan, as I remember it, was to research it in more depth as we went on, and that just simply never really happened. But I also remember at that time that there were notifications sent to landowners asking them if they considered their land agricultural land or not. Would we be doing that this time? <clears throat> To you, Madam Warden, yes, we would. Um, we, well, I don't know that we put that question in the letter. What we will do is send everybody who's proposed to get zoning um, to let them know what <coughs> zoning they're proposed to get and what it means. So let them know generally what the restrictions and uses permitted in that zone would be. Personally, <coughs> I think that question should be in that letter. Do you agree that this is the correct zone for your land, which then gives the landowner an opportunity and an understanding of how, you know, if they don't particularly understand or agree, it gives them an opportunity to, <coughs> to address the question. Because there is a lot of land, and not just in the unplanned area, but across the municipality, which is not owned by an active farm or anything, but there is land that they let the neighboring farmer cut the hay on it just to keep it from growing up in brushes. That would be considered active agricultural land. But if there were plans in place, succession plans or something for something else to be done with that land, I don't know how we will make those decisions, but I do think that residents should have the opportunity to say, well, this little two acre plot here is not big enough to farm on. The farmer down the road has always mowed the hay. It has always been my plan when I retire to build a garage here to house my antique cars or, you know, what have you. So I just think there has to be an opportunity for people because for this rollout in the unzoned area, communication is key. And I think it's very important to reassure people that they have a voice and, and that we are listening. 
So I don't know if we need an amendment to that to say that that would happen. I'm quite content to allow that to be the draft designation. It, and and uh, through you, Madam Board, it, 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 these are all drafts. So um, what we're intending to do, uh, once we have the entire document together to get, and then if we get the endorsement from council, we'll go hold a series, uh, another series of community meetings where we'd be able to discuss zoning and we would send notices for those meetings. So in those notices, we can talk, uh, I guess that's a letter I was referring to, where we would tell people what their proposed zoning is. Um, and we'll, we're intending to bring a re another report to you next month to talk about the public consultation for that phase. So I guess that might be the opportunity to uh, give you a draft letter to show you what we're gonna tell people. Well, I would be prepared to go along with this at least till I see the draft letter. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all, Madam Ward. That's all, thank you. That's all, Director. Yeah. I'll give you back to Chair. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Questions been called. And the motion has passed by a vote of eight to two with Councillor Garden Cole and Councillor Rhino voting nay. The Agricultural Advisory Committee recommends that Planning Advisory Committee recommend to Council that lands with class two soils be designated and zoned as agricultural reserve soils as identified in the East Hans Plant Update Future Planned Area Agricultural Mapping App. As chair of the committee, I so move. Do we have a seconder? Do we have a seconder? Seconded by the deputy warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Once again, deputy warden. I will not take up too much longer of Council's time, but for the same reasons that I outlined on the previous discussion around these Class II soil lands, um, I don't feel that this is appropriate at this time. Um, we're not going to regulate these these. Um, we're not regulating these lands because of the prior vote of council, so I see no reason to designate them. I just see that causing roadblocks and, and confusion in the future. That if someone owns land and, and uh, it's classified, it's zoned as agricultural reserve soils, but there are no regulation around it. I agree with Councillor Musa that, that the more appropriate zone is probably rural use, which also allows for agricultural usages and uh, would be a fairly simple rezoning if someone wanted to rezone RU to agricultural. So I, I don't feel that, uh, I guess I feel that with the prior vote of council that this particular motion is now superfluous and not needed. Thank you. Any comments from the director? Um, through you, uh, Deputy Warden. Yes, I mean, this motion is linked to the one that you've already refused, so um, I presume, you know, there wouldn't be much point in passing this one if you're not going to support the first one. Councillor Musa. Thank you, Madam Warden. So, so if, if a land is zoned AR2, is it going to be like tax, lower tax, uh, in the lowest, lower tax uh, bracket or something, like agricultural? Um, through you, uh, Madam Warden, the, the taxes really depend on the use. So if the province thinks it's being used for agriculture, then you get that lower, um, or no tax, I guess, on agricultural land. But... Um, the zoning might play some part in that, but it's really the use that the PBSC believes. So, it's. so if someone, if we if we if we put it into RU zoning, and someone want to take advantage of the tax, and he's a farmer and want to take advantage, they can always apply to change it from RU zone to AR zone. So I, th I think I think that's that's the best way to go for now because it's give the owner flexibility of developing the land if they want to and. Farm it if they want to without like costing them a lot of money. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
questions from call? And the motion has been defeated eight votes to two with uh, Councillor Eisner and Councillor Tingley voting in favor and everyone else voting against. Okay. Item five, plan update background paper, multiple unit residential R3 zone. As part of the ongoing plan update, planning staff prepared a background paper regarding updates to the multiple unit residential zone. Proposed amendments will clarify MPS policy, proposed changes to the design standards, and proposes to provide council with a wider range of options when considering a development agreement for more than one primary building. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to council that council authorize staff to draft proposed amendments to the official community plan in regards to changes to the multiple unit residential R3 zone as presented to executive committee on June 21st, 2022 and outlined in this staff report as well as authorized staff to write a letter to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing requesting amendments to allow for open space funds to be recouped for multiple unit dwellings as part of infrastructure charges. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Perry. Any discussion? Once again, Deputy Warden. Uh, question uh, through you to uh, John. My only concern, and I apologize for all my questions uh, this evening, I was just simply unable to be here on committee day. By widening the things that could be done under a development agreement, are we weakening council's position? And by this I mean that we often get requests for development that we just don't feel fit but if our policies allow for it under a development agreement then we're hamstrung and we really can't refuse it because if we refuse a development agreement those are appealable and if it's determined on appeal that it fits within any of our policies we're going to lose the appeal so my concern is that if we're loosening up, you know, for lack of a better word, and widening the things that can be considered under a development agreement, are we weakening our position in being able to refuse developments that for one reason or another we may feel do not fit in a certain place? Um, through you, Deputy Warden, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, it. I think it was just a language error when we looked at why we wanted to make this change. So right now, if you have a 24 unit building and you want to add, and by development agreement, you can already add a, another building, but it, you're stuck with adding another 24 unit building instead of an 18 unit building or a six unit or a, or a 28 unit building. Um, but then there's some other things that have been added to restrict that. Um, like one of them is uh, there's now a density requirement. So the minimum lot size, with the minimum lot size, you get a ratio of 24 units per 0.3 hectares. So we're proposing to add that as a limit. Um, there are also, the yard setbacks have increased. Um, and then there's some design requirements that have been added. So, uh, and some design requirements for the outdoor amenity space. So we think between all those things that I don't think, you know, if you're asking, are you gonna end up approving something you don't like because the policy says you have to? I don't think so because of these other things that have been added in addition to loosening up the number of units that can be added. But for example, on your 0 0.3 hectares, I mean, we have, we have policies regarding building heights and that too, but under development agreements, we're able to vary those. Would we be able to vary that 0 0.3 hectares under the development agreement? Um, no, that, that's a requirement for a DA. It says that that's now, if you're going to negotiate a DA, it has to be within that ratio. So that was put right in the section to deal with DAs. Okay. But these changes, are, for example, if you have one building that's 30 units, 24 units, I believe you use, then 
by development agreement if a second building was requested and you had the 0.3 hectares and the second building was requested to be 50 units. You know, and are there still height restrictions there? Are there? Um, well, once you open up a DA, no. There, there, I mean, three stories is the, is the um, zone limit, but that's the, it doesn't have to be that way once you open it up to a DA. Yeah. If you want it limited to three stories in every case or four stories, then we can add that to the DA provisions. This just concerns me because recently, I think we're all hearing the same thing, is that developers quite naturally and understandably want to maximize their profits on, on their land and their development, but the existing community and people that live there don't always look at it the same way. So I guess anything that appears to me to make it more difficult to manage development requests. It, it causes me concern. Thank you. Any other comments from the director? Okay. I'll give you back to chair, Madam Warden. Councilor Garden Cole. We're trying, Sandra. Let's just be off. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Madam Warden. So, my conviction on this hasn't changed from last week when it was proposed. There are lots of good housekeeping items on it as as it was presented that I do agree with. But the the big one is the one that I do have concerns with, and the response to that was, well, it gives us more control. And that is all in the eye of the beholder. So from, from one person's perspective, at, at one point, yes, it would give us more control. But when it comes down to a vote, I guess, or control, it is under the control of the council. Um, but of course, you know, one person representing their residents in a certain area are still only one vote. And, and I... Um, I do have a problem with opening this up in this way, and I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. And the motion has passed by a vote of six to four. With Councillor Musa, Councillor Rhino, Councillor Garden, Cole, and myself voting nay. Back to you, Councillor. Item six plan update background paper, funding vulnerability study. As part of the ongoing plan update, planning staff prepared a background paper regarding land use planning for the areas along the Fundy shoreline. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council. The Council authorized staff to prepare land use policies and regulations for land along the Fundy shoreline based on the direction in staff's report dated June 9, 2022 and endorsed the letter to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Tingley. Councillor Rhino. So through you too, staff. So that is with the recommendations of not splitting uh, things on a, on a roadway, and so lots of properties would not be the same? Uh, through you, uh, Madam Ward, I think you're, that's the next report okay. on the settlement. So okay, no, I'm getting issue. mixed up with this rural yeah. settlement one, so. Thank you. Any further discussion? Questions, Questions been called. Uh, and the motion is passed by a vote of nine to one. Councillor Rhino voting nay. Item seven, <clears throat> plan update background paper settlements. As part of the ongoing plan update, planning staff prepared a background paper regarding five rural settlements and options for regulating land use in these areas. 
The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that Council authorize staff to draft proposed amendments to the official community plan related to rural settlements as outlined in the staff report Plan Update Rural Settlements dated June 10, 2022, and that the proposed community boundaries do not split by a highway. Example, the same on both sides of the road. As chair of the committee, I so move. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by the deputy warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Let's gain deputy warden. I find myself challenged by this because once again, this is imposing planning on an area that did not ask for it and that we were told by the provincial government that we had to do it. And at the public information meetings that were held, which even in COVID, people, people came out to find out what was going on because they're concerned. And there was not, to my understanding, any indication given to folks at that time that if you lived in the village of Kennecook or Upper Rodden or Maitland or Knoll or wherever, that you were going to be treated differently than the people half a mile down the road. And that's concerning to me. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing, but I'm saying that in the initial imposing of zoning on the rural side of the municipality. I wouldn't go here. This to me would be something that would be discussed in a plan review after zoning was initially in place. We don't have zoning in the settlement of Elmsdale. We don't have zoning around the settlement of Enfield. We don't have zoning around specifically the settlement of Shubenacadie as separate little villages. We have zoning and, and you know, it's covered. And it's my opinion, and I live in Upper Rodden, and I don't know where you're gonna put your compass point and draw your circle around these settlements. That could be challenging. So personally, and this is just my opinion, I don't believe that uh, this is something that should be proceeded with now. I think that putting zoning in place and educating the public, and I think that's enough for now. And if a need comes up that we have to do something different around the rural settlements, as they're being called, then it can be addressed at that time. And yes, I know, you run the risk of something obnoxious being put where somebody doesn't want it, I suppose, but that's no different from the risk that these folks have been living with for hundreds of years, and they'd be quite happy to continue living with it in perpetuity if we weren't being forced to put zoning in place at all. So it's my personal opinion that these communities shouldn't be treated any differently than the rest of the rural area, and I will not be supporting this motion. Thank you. Any comments from the director? Um, sure. Oops. Um, <clears throat> so when we went out to those meetings last fall, the warden's right. I mean, we didn't suggest that we were going to have separate zoning, but we did have, we basically set up with different stations, and one of them was to talk about um, these, I don't think we call them settlements, but communities and had specific mapping for those areas to talk about some of the issues that might be there. Um, <laughs> And so the idea was always that we would gather that information, come back, create a draft, and then bring that draft back out to the community and, and see what people think of that. In the staff report, we did present the option of just using a rural use or perhaps modified rural use zone, uh, like we're proposing to do in the other areas. Um, but we just saw enough planning issues and enough density in these five communities that we thought this approach would be a better one. It's still pretty straightforward planning in that it's a single zone, so you can do residential, you can do commercial, um, and uh, also you can actually do more in this zone in terms of density, in terms of residential density, than you can in the rural use zone. So uh, we thought it was a, a reasonable compromise. Anything else, Madam Warden? No, I continue to not support the motion. Thank you. Okay. I'll give you back the chair. Oh, there's a couple on there. Uh, 
Councillor Musa. Thank you, Madam Morgan. To you, John. Like those those areas you recognize and those so-called settlements are are they gonna end up like a growth management area when they end? You can introduce paving and subdivision. Like I could see that going on and on and on. Though. Is that the plan to do like something like that? Uh, for you, Madam Warden, no, that's not what we're thinking of right now. I mean, these are rural settlements. They're, they're a little bit different than, especially the service communities that you expect to grow more. Um, it was really just trying to come up with a zone that fit the community that's there. Um, no, I don't see it as a prelude to a growth management area unless, you know, development really takes off. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's, my, that's my, my question. Like, if, if, if those areas start to grow faster and a faster pace, that, that's a plan to do something like what happened in Mount Uniac. Like, I remember Mount Uniac when you have one house every year, now you have 30, 40, 50. So you had to do something over there to manage what's going on there. So is that the plan to do what? Yeah. To, to you, uh, Madam Board, there is no plan beyond creating this zone and designation and, and you know, taking it out to the public and see what they think of it. Okay. Uh, I, I think I can, I can take it to the public, but it depends what they say. I'm going to, I'll support it this time. Thank you. Councilor Rhino. Just so, Councilor Rhino, I'm having a problem getting the mics turned on and off. I'm sorry. There we go. Good. So with these villages or whatever, and let's say we didn't go that way and we hid rural use blanket across across the unzoned area it is now. Currently in the village of Maitland, we have a heritage conservation district, which would which would take precedence. Uh, would the one be stronger than the other? Would the, how would that, how would that work we, with regard to that? So sorry, I, I didn't catch that. What be stronger than what? Yeah, you if we blanketed the, we stayed away from the settlements mm -hmm. and we blanketed the whole entire area of rural use, but within that rural use, we have the Heritage Conservation District in Maitland. So, which would King the other, or would they would they rec would they be, you know, that type of through you, Madam Warren. So the role <laughs> or the Heritage Conservation District doesn't regulate land use; it only regulates a change to historic buildings. So it really doesn't matter what the zoning is in terms of the um, Heritage Conservation District. Now, having said that, I think if you have rural zoning, there's a potential to have more uh, land uses that are in conflict with what's there now, but. But it doesn't actually regulate the um, the use of that land, just the buildings. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And the system is very slow. Councillor Perry. Thank you, Madam Warden. Through you to staff. So, in these communities where these villages or settlements are, um, if this does not go forward and, and it's going to be zoned where there is a commercial business, where there is an industrial use, where there is all these things, would those properties now be zoned as for the uses they're currently being used under, similar to the agricultural? Um, so you would have on the same street, you'd have a commercial property where there is a store, you might have a garage or industrial use where somebody is repairing or doing something. Is, is that how it would be uh, zoned in that <clears throat> instance, where it would be zoned by the current use of what the property is being used for? Um, through Madam Warden, yes, it, it's actually um, similar to the rural use zone in that we tried to create not a general rural zone, but a general community zone so that it's one zone that would uh, allow all those different uses to happen without having to rezone or do a development agreement to change around. Yeah, because when we did the presentation on committee day, it was my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Director, that this zone actually enables more things than the rural use. Through you, Madam Warden, it enables more of some things, like uh, density of residential development. It wouldn't allow some things that are permitted in the rural use zone, like scrapyards, salvage yards, um, racetracks, amusement parks, you know, some of those larger land intensive noisy things that wouldn't, you, know, you probably wouldn't want in the center of your community. Okay, thank you.
Councillor Lusa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, and I want to share with you guys like what happened in Mount Uniac for the RU zone we had in between homes that they're very close. The RU zone is very risky because it brings with her the aggressive of intensive farming, whatever, livestock. So you probably could be helping one person, but you could be like ruining the life of so many people that have like half an acre next to a two or three acre and you kept it RU zone. So I, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys, but to speak about it, but I just want to share with you that it's the RU zone I've been after John for a different zone for growth in Mount Uniac. And that's the reason why, because you could ask for RU zone and you could end up with different, totally different thing that a lot of people is gonna be hurt from it. So be careful with that, thank you. Back to you, Deputy Warden. Um, I just, we're talking about an area that has been existing forever without any zoning. And, you know, folks have been managing pretty well. Um, love to see some growth. Don't anticipate in most of the rural area that being in double digit percentages anytime soon. <clears throat> These, there are a lot of pre-existing uses that whatever zone you put in place, whether it's in these settlements or just generally in the rural area, they're grandfathered anyway because they're there before the zoning comes in, so they're there. And I think about the community of Upper Rodden, and I did look at the boundaries as much as I could, and I, I kind of wondered if they'd been specifically drawn to exclude some presently existing businesses but I mean, I have large scrapyard with multiple properties and it's in Upper Rodden. Um, I think the lines get kind of drawn around it, but I just, and the rural zone that we're talking about is not a cookie cutter copy of rural use as it exists now. We're talking about some type of modified rural use zone. Am I correct? Um, to you, Deputy Warden, yes, although it's more permissive. Like we talked about changing it to allow um, RVs on properties, which you're not allowed to do in the existing uh, RU zone. That to me follows along with what the rural councillors requested when we entered into mm -hmm. this discussion. That this is a little different than zoning where there's been zoning for many, many years. This is zoning in an area that has never had these type of restrictions. The majority of people that I have spoken with by far see it as big brother meddling in their business and they don't want these restrictions. So I'm, I'm still where I was before at this point in time. I'm not interested and I know you say there would be more of some things permitted and maybe less of others. And I, I'm just thinking that starting down this road of introducing zoning where there hasn't been any before, let's just treat us all the same. Thank you. Any further comments from the director? No. No. Give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. <clears throat> Okay, any further discussion? Questions. Questions been called. <clears throat> and the motion has passed by a vote of seven to three with Councillor Garden Cole, myself, and Councillor Green voting nay. Chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Okay, moving along, we will go to Parks, Rec, and Culture. 
Councillor Rhino. Committee held its regular meeting June 21st, 2022 in Council Chambers. The following motion is coming forward as a result of the meeting. Municipal Grant Program Policy. The Municipal Grant Program Policy is one of the first policies reviewed through the new policy review program. A jurisdictional scan was conducted and meetings uh, were held with impacted staff to identify ways to improve policy. Several sections were added to the policy con uh, concerning grant agreements for large grants, the eligibility for religious groups for funding, recognition of receiving, receiving funding, edits to single window grant applications, and updates to the grant overview table. For, so from that, the Parts, Recreation, and Culture Committee recommends staff that Council approves the proposed updates to the Municipal Grant Program Policy uh, last updated September 2016. The Chair of the Committee, I do so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion? Deputy Warden. Um, just a couple of questions, and I'm, I'm pretty sure on the one. I was a little concerned um, around the requirement for these groups to advertise somehow that there was municipal money in their projects. And I was thinking, you know, I was thinking of the groups that got two or three hundred dollars or something and that they don't really, they don't have a Facebook page, they don't have, and I've been assured that we would not be expecting these folks to put up a sign or advertise somehow that they got a municipal <clears throat> grant. And I guess I just want a little more reassurance that that's the case. Absolutely, uh, through you, Deputy Warden, uh, to Council. Um, obviously, if a group was receiving um, a smaller scale donation and they did not have the capacity because they did not have a Facebook page, staff would take that into consideration. And um, also, when it came to grants where the recognition required signage, et cetera, we do actually have budget that we would provide the sign or provide the loan of a um, banner or otherwise so as not to put them out. Thank you. And secondly, and I apologize because uh, I did read this, but I'm still a little unclear, and I'd just like some clarification as to exactly what the changes around religious groups are. Through you, Deputy Warden, um, religious groups would be permitted to get funding as long as it was for um, items that would provide service for an entire community, not just secular to the religious group. So they would be permitted for that, but if it was for um, funding or projects that would only be applicable to the religious group itself, then they would not apply. And is that a change from previous? It's my understanding that this is how the policy was, or the grant policy was delivered in the past, but they just wanted to clearly identify it within the policy itself. I, I just, and I understand it, I just have a little bit of concern about it. And I'm not, because I think, what if, what if a particular church had a summer camp for youth and it's not available to everybody, um, but it's still a very valuable, you know, a very valuable thing for the youth that can go. And I just thought to myself, how is that different than a grant for a hockey team to host a tournament when not everybody's eligible to go? Or how is it different than a grant for a, a ball field or a skate park? Or And I know you can say, <clears throat> It, but it's it kind of in my mind almost starts to run down the lines of um, okay we're going to give this group a grant to run a girls dance camp boys aren't eligible and vice versa it just gets into a lot you know and I I just I just wouldn't want to completely slam the door if a religious organization of some kind had some type of a program because 
I don't want to treat religious groups any differently than we're treating other groups, I guess is all I want to say. Any further comments from the director? Or? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. Any further discussion? Questions. Questions been called. One more vote to come, folks. Still one more vote to come, folks. Still only have nine votes. Okay. We'll start we'll start the vote again. And the vote is in and it's passed unanimously. Uh, District Recreation Fund DRF grants 2022-23. The second D, uh, District Recreation Fund intake deadline was April 30th, 2022. Four new applications received, total $25,742 in requested funds. The applications were reviewed by the grant committee and evaluated against District Recreation Fund policy. So from that, the Parks and Recreation and Culture Committee recommended to Council that Council approve District Recreation Funds of 2022-2023 intake number two based on, on policy as follows. Lions Memorial Park, $2,270 from District 3, $2,730 from District 2 for a total of $5,000. Mount Uniac Legion, $5,000 from District 8, $5,000 from District 9 for a total of $10,000. Corner Minor Baseball Association, $3,889.50 from District 10, $7,779 from District 1, and $3,889.50 from District 2 for a total of $15,557. Enfield Elmsdale and District Lions Club, $2,963 in District 10, $2,963 in District 2 for a total of $5,926. As chair of the committee, I do so move. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Uh, Deputy Warden. Uh, just a quick question through you to the director. Is there anything in the policy which prohibits somebody, a group from looking for district recreation funds year after year, consecutive years, or, or no? Through you, Madam Warden, no, there's not. Uh, as long as in the policy they do provide all of the follow-up reports at the end of the year, then they are eligible to apply the following year. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Garden Cole. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Um, I think there might be a, um, a minor mistake in the uh, Corridor Minor Baseball Association application. I believe it was District 10 that was paying 50% of the amount applied for, and then District uh, 1 and District 2 were paying 25% each. I believe that was our intention where it is a District 10 project. Through you, Madam Warden, from the notes I have here, yes, it is District 10 that has the amount of 7,779. And then I actually have District 1 and 7 with 3,889.50 each. Okay, do we need an amendment to the motion to change those districts? So we would be looking for an amendment to the motion that would say the Corridor Minor Baseball Association grant would be 7,779 from District 10, 388950 from District 1, and the same amount from District 7. Is that correct? Someone prepared to move that amendment? I'll move that. Councillor Garden Cole, seconder to the amendment, mm -hmm. seconded by the Deputy Warden. Anyone wish to speak to the amend amendment? Question on the amendment. <laughs> and
and the it has passed unanimously. Now back to the amended motion. Does anyone wish to speak to the amended motion? Question. Question has been called. And the motion has passed unanimously. Madam Warden, the Chair of the Committee, I move the adoption of this report. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. And that brings us to the Audit Committee, which I guess I am not the Chair of the Audit Committee. Councillor Perry is the Chair of the Audit Committee. So I'll send this along to Councillor Perry. And I'll turn on his mic. Thank you, Warden. The committee held a virtual and in-person meeting on June 29th, 2022. The committee received a presentation from Derek Dempster, CPA, CA, and Daniel Goosen, CPA, from Deloitte on the 2021-2022 audit results. Recommendations are coming forward to Council in July 2022. As Chair of the commu Committee, I move the adoption of this report. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Question. Questions been called. Are all those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion is carried. Ah, next we have my report. So back to you, Deputy Warden. Go ahead, Warden, with your report. And uh, thank you, Deputy Warden and <clears throat> Council. I apologize if my report is not particularly well put together this month, but I hope I don't miss anything. Um, the first part of June, I was privileged to attend the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in Regina. It was, an it was great to have an in-person conference and uh, to actually be able to interact, liaise, and network with uh, councillors from across the country. Uh, great to hear the keynotes, the political keynotes, and, uh, and the two young gentlemen that did the trek across uh, Canada from north to south. It was fascinating to, to listen to them. And the one gentleman, after enduring all that he endured, fell doing a, on a rock climbing wall or something in a gym and broke his leg so badly that he's hardly mobile yet. It just goes to show. Uh, there were many, I discovered there are many common issues across the country, wherever you're from, and there are some different ones, but uh, You'd be surprised the amount of places have rooster issues. I'll leave it at that. Um, the um, study tour that I went on was uh, the solar and wind farm tour, and uh, I found that, you know, extremely interesting, the collaboration that was there, and just to see the, you know, the rows upon rows of solar panels and... Uh, it was a great opportunity, as I said before, for networking, and I, I do think it was a, a very a very worthwhile conference for the first one that was held in person for two or three years. Um, on June the 9th, uh, of course, we had our respectful workplace workshop here at the municipal building, and I think that that went, uh, went very well, and, uh, and it was a good workshop. On June the 16th, uh, I uh, presented the Leadership Award at Hans North Rural High. And it was a very well attended award ceremony. And uh, the young lady, I believe her name was Laura Doucette, who it was extremely pleased to receive the award that, that she did receive. On June 27th, um, I took part in the virtual boundary review meeting for the federal uh, proposed boundary changes, and uh, I was, uh, uh, Councillor Tingley was, was on the, there as well, and the, uh, the commission certainly said that uh, we have been well represented in the uh, actual in-person ones, and that they had had some, to use their words, 
very animated presentations from folks advocating on East Hans's position, and uh, they had certainly been heard. So uh, anyway, I thank everyone who presented for, for doing that. And uh, I attended, what day is this, Wednesday? I attended on Monday an announcement uh, uh, at the Shuby River Park, the funding announcement uh, for the new playground that's being built there. And it was uh, very exciting to see the spot and know that the work is going to be started and that that accessible playground will be there before we know it. And in closing, I'd, I'd just like to say that, um, as you're all aware, this past week or two has been a time of great personal stress for me as my husband is dealing with some serious health issues. And I just, I just wanted to thank council and staff for your patience and your understanding. And it certainly is appreciated on my behalf. Thank you very much. That's it, Deputy Warden. Any, any questions to the warden? I'll give you back the chair. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So next we're at business from counselors. I can't remember where I started last time. So this time, yes, I'll go around and I'll start with Counselor Tingley. Uh, yes, uh, the first uh, week of June, I attended the uh, Federation of Can Canadian Municipalities Convention uh, with several other councillors. Uh, that was an excellent uh, um, thing to participate in as a new councillor. Um, I'm not going to cover all the things that uh, the warden covered, but uh, some of the networking, getting to meet with uh, some of the other mayors and councillors, um, and hearing the things that they're dealing with, uh, with respect to land use and, uh, and water and energy and affordable housing, climate change. A lot of the things that are on our agenda are, uh, they're dealing with the same things. I got to meet uh, a couple of mayors that really stuck out. One uh, fellow was uh, the oldest mayor in Canada. Uh, he just surpassed uh, the lady in Mississauga. Uh, his name is Gord Krantz. He's been the mayor of uh, Milton for 42 years. Um, got some good insight from him, um, good stories. Uh, he was a, a good friend with uh, uh, Johnny Bauer, the goalie for uh, Toronto Maple Leafs back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, attended that uh, uh, solar panel uh, facility that was owned by the First Nations group. Uh, in uh, Regina, uh, it's, it's amazing what they're doing there. Um, on June 8th, uh, I attended uh, an East Hans crime prevention uh, meeting with uh, several other counselors. Um, it was just an information session and they're also trying to recruit uh, volunteers. I think the municipalities involved in trying to help them uh, recruit some volunteers. Uh, June 9th, uh, uh, participated in that uh, harassment training uh, with the uh, at the municipality it was nice to get together outside of being in camera uh, and just be able to talk in general type of thing uh, <clears throat> June 15th I attended the corridor options uh, meeting at the Legion uh, in Enfield uh, again several other counselors were there and uh, our MLA John McDonald <clears throat> Uh, June 15th, uh, at the request of the Lance Fire Department, uh, met with them at the fire department. They just wanted to present to me their interest in the elementary school site and uh, uh, the municipality is keeping them up to date on what's happening there and uh, they're, they're surely going to be given consideration uh, as, as this process unfolds. <coughs> Uh, June 18th, uh, assisted the Lance Beautification Society uh, hang, hang their plants for the year along Highway 2. Uh, Carrie McDougall uh, is the main organizer there. MLA John McDonald and others assisted that day as well. <laughs> On uh, June 18th, the same day, uh, participated in a, 
uh, Milford Lions Barbecue at the Milford Fire Department, uh, which was well attended. Uh, June 20th, uh, attended uh, Lance Recreation Meeting. They're in the process of looking for more vo volunteers, and uh, there are a few people that are showing interest. <coughs> Uh, June 25th, attended the East Hans Historical Society grand opening in Selma. Uh, John McDonnell and uh, Deputy Warden Mitchell were also there. Uh, met one of my former uh, teachers. Uh, fortunately, she didn't ask me where my uh, homework was. Uh, I'm sure she was looking for it years ago. Uh, June 27th, uh, made a presentation to the uh, Federal Electoral uh, District's Redistribution uh, Commission with uh, Warden uh, Rolston. Uh, and yes, they did uh, mention one of the comments I put down there is they said the people that presented in person uh, did East Hans very proud. Um, they mentioned that they had received approximately 1,000 uh, written presentations, and I, I think East Hans may have submitted 500, so um, that looks pretty good. Uh, they. They seem to uh, uh, be very receptive uh, to our uh, presentations, and uh, Warden Rolston uh, made a very good presentation herself. Uh, June 29th, that's today, so I attended my first uh, Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities Group Insurance Oversight Meeting. It's just basically an introduction to the rest of the group and uh, setting out uh, a plan of um, how we're going to deal with that uh, in the coming year. Um, that's about it. <coughs> I'd like to, uh, I'm, I'm going to be away uh, for a family reunion in July 12th to the 24th uh, next month. Uh, it won't be for three consecutive days, but uh, I, I, I wanted to notify council of that and uh, request permission to be absent uh, for the July 19th and, if needed, the July 21st meeting, or uh, permission to join the meeting through video uh, web conference. And uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you, Councillor. So there was a question there around uh, being absent for the July meetings or being able to join via Zoom, similar to what uh, the CAO did. So that would require a decision by council, so uh, perhaps would, would you be interested in, would you prefer to join the meetings by Zoom or, or do you feel you'll be better to just miss the meetings? What's the... Uh, I'm happy to miss the meetings, uh, you know, unless a council thinks I should be here, but uh, if you want me to participate in the meetings, I have no problem calling in by Zoom. Right. So I guess um, if you wanted to participate by Zoom, I would say um, I would put a motion on the floor asking Council's permission to do that, or alternatively, just a simple request for, you know, yeah, for Council to acknowledge that you're not able to attend on those days is fine too. Um, we all miss a meeting or two sometime or other. Um, Councillor Green to the... Thank you, Warden. Yeah, I would just say we've all missed a meeting once in a while for something. It's, uh, I think the policy was more put in place for people who were missing them. Many meetings in a row is what we were looking at. Uh, I, would, I have no problem at all with Councillor Tingley attending a family reunion, and if you ask to miss a meeting, that's, that's part of life. Any further discussion? So are you okay with that, Councillor Tingley? I'm fine with that, yeah. I just wanted to bring it forth, and I don't anticipate ever meeting three meeting, or meet, missing yeah. three meetings or missing a lot of meetings, but I just wanted to let Council know I'll be away ahead of time, and if if I had to attend, uh, you know, let me know, and I'll call in by Zoom. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, I do have... Um, some late breaking information here that there was a mistake in the district numbers in that last DRF motion that we made. I think what I will do is perhaps continue with business from councillors and once we're finished that we'll go back and revisit that motion and make sure we have the correct 
numbers in the book. So, Councillor Musa. Thank you, Madam Warden. A uh, couple things, like the, the fair this year in Mount Uniac was a success, and the, with the support the fire department are having from the 50-50 draw, they had all the rides for free and everything, so a lot of people enjoyed it this year and it was well attended even with the weather. And again, I missed the parade for cooking some fish for them. <laughs> which that's life, I guess. Thank you. That's it for now. Okay. Councillor Perry. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Um, I also attended the uh, FCM conference in Regina and uh, took part in the uh, trip out to the, I, think, I believe it was the Kamanasis First Nation that had partnered uh, in, in providing that uh, green infrastructure and uh, it was really great to see how they've, they've taken on that project with a corporate partner and are actually buying out their corporate partner so they will have full ownership of that project in a number of years and they actually expanded the project into their own community and are providing green energy within their own community as well and it's led to a lot of hiring and skills uh, gained by their people uh, in that industry. Also at the FCM, one of the great things that uh, was great to see is the breakout groups. There is definitely a few uh, takeaways um, from some of the breakout groups I attended. Myself and the CAO attended one where it, there is possibility for the municipality to see some savings in some of our reporting in the future um, based upon a uh, government agency that, that, that's out there, which is it's good to explore to see if that's if that's actually something that we, we can leverage. The... Um, the one thing you, you can't replace via Zoom is, is the conversations you have with people. And sitting there and meeting with people from all over the country, uh, I remember one of the topics on one of the bus rides back from one of the uh, uh, site visits that we did was actually about roosters. And it was an issue in Montreal. It's an issue in outside of Regina. It's an issue in Edmonton. It's an issue in Southern Ontario. Uh, probably even in Newfoundland, but uh, yeah, it's it was it was funny just to see how common uh, certain issues that we we think here are 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 you know unique. They're not uh, the commonalities of infrastructure, aging infrastructure, uh, downloading responsibilities right from the federal government to the provincial governments to the municipalities is something that uh, was well documented and well um, spoken about at the FCM, which was good. Uh, upon returning from there, um, I got the honor to present a 100th birthday certificate to Wayman Hunt, resident of Mount Uniac, a World War II veteran. Uh, he was very thrilled to receive the recognition from the, from the municipality, and uh, he, he, was, he showed me his recognition that he's received for his 99th birthday um, the year before from different, different agencies, and it was, it was great to see uh, a Canadian such, such as that that had given so much to, to the country and the community over the years. Again, with the Fireman's Fair, um, yeah, it was great. Um, normally takes eight to 10 months for the planning committee to plan the fair, plan the parade and organize everything. With the construction of the multi-purpose pad that was funded um, through the federal government and municipality, the ability of the fair was unknown. And when it was known that the pad was gonna be completed in time, they actually pulled together the planning in six to eight weeks. So. I really want to say kudos to all the volunteers uh, and the volunteer firefighters because the fair is, is put off by a whole team of volunteer firefighters and community volunteers that make that happen. And as Councillor Musa uh, mentioned, um, as coming out of COVID and due to the success of the 50-50, all the rides uh, were free. Uh, so children could just go on whatever they wanted to. It was well received by the community. They doubled down on their fireworks budget and uh, I would care to guess it's going to be awful hard for any community in the next little while to beat that fireworks display. It was very well done. After that, um, we had the library board. We had our annual general meeting. And uh, from, from, from that, um, there's some reports and reviews. Uh, the library is in good standing right now. Uh, coming out of COVID and during COVID, they were extremely busy. We've seen in the library a lot of downloading of provincial services to our librarians. 
and uh, and to our library assistants. And the library is, you know, who would think that a library was your pop up testing site? Your library was where you picked up your your COVID test, right? And now in some libraries, they're even doing virtual healthcare in some libraries across the province. They're, that that's what's happening. So all these things are major issues that are going to have to be addressed at some point to to the provincial level but i think it's it's very uh important for council to hear like the libraries are doing all these services and um there is a a, a review going on of the the structure for the libraries but currently um if you start off year one in the library you would make more money starting off at mcdonald's so there's also a pay and equity and livable wage issue that is being addressed by our uh, library board at this time I had the honor to present the Grade 8 Citizenship Award at Uniac District School during their non-academic awards. And it was really great to see all the children receive their awards for athletics, community involvement, and, and different clubs. Um, parents were extremely proud to be able to attend these events in person again. And the school uh, was very welcoming. Uh, I had a nice talk with the principal who was looking forward to the fall. And the principal wanted to pass on a message that they're extremely happy and cannot say enough of how well they appreciate all the support that the school has gotten from the municipality staff. They mentioned Corinne in name as well, that um, they extremely, or sorry, they really enjoy uh, the working in partnership and they look as we return to a normal full service model come the fall in the schools, that that can expand. Also today, I would like to say uh, congratulations to all graduates across the municipality at all the high schools, but I'd like to especially take the time to point out the Avonview graduates. Uh, originally, Avonview was not going to have a graduation ceremony. They were the only high school in the province that was not having one. The school administration decided to do it virtually. Uh, through the constant efforts of the students themselves, supported by their parents, but the students themselves, they actually had a graduation ceremony today. So I want to commend those students as they fought and they worked hard to have their ceremony, to have their day. And I should lead them on well going into the future to understand that, you know, if you need, if you want something and you work hard and you go after it and you're organized, you, you can make things happen. So I want to wish them a happy graduation. That is the it of that side. I do have a couple questions to staff. Um, beautification grants. Um, a few of them have been submitted and I'm getting calls wondering when the when those checks would be sent out. There's one for the Legion. The Legion was wondering if that check was, you have, to check. you have to check on that? Okay, you can just check on that and then send me a message later, that'd be fine. There's also, um, I got a call from a bunch of concerned residents um, on Lily Lake Road with development. Um, there's a subdivision of lots going in on Lily Lake Road. And I was wondering if there was any open space or anything, if the municipality was engaged in that development at all. Uh, through you, uh, Madam Warden, we're aware there's a proposal, but we actually don't have an application yet. So depending on how many lots it is, there may have to be open space contribution. Okay, because the, the biggest concern is lots are already being sold. And they're, they're on, you can go on Viewpoint right now and you can see that there's two lots sold, there's three pending, there's a bunch more up for sale. Um, I, I That might be something that, uh, on Viewpoint, yeah, on Lily Lake Road. Uh, so that yeah. that is, I, I, I would have figured the subdivision process, it's still one PID listed, so I would have figured the subdivision process would have had to have been, been, been started. Um, and I just was wondering the number of units that were coming through because that, that was the, the concern. The community didn't know uh, how many other units were going in because it is literally one whole side of the road that could fit quite a few more homes. And that's it for me. Other than that, I, uh, I want to say it's great to be in council chambers and it's been a, a good and busy spring. Thank you. Just before I go to Councillor Green, I was remiss when I did my report. I'd just like to ask Council maybe for a little round of applause for Deputy Warden Mitchell, who is now a representative on the board of FCM. And uh, 
He will serve us and uh, Nova Scotia well. Okay, Councillor Green. Well, all I have is the upcoming weekend in Knoll, the 8th, 9th, and 10th. 10th is the chicken barbecue. If anybody's hungry, get there early. It doesn't last very long. And is, uh, other than that, it's been pretty quiet in District 6. So that's all for me. Deputy Warden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, finishing it off the month of May, we had the Sportsplex Board meeting, and the takeaway from that meeting is that coming up on July the 11th, we'll have a Sportsplex rate meeting to set the rates so that Council has is aware that we'll be setting the rates for the ice, et cetera, on that evening. I also, too, ascended the FCM in Regina. I uh, brought back some treats for everybody. Hopefully the lights still work. I didn't play with them, but I did try them all. I brought back some handouts for the directors. I'm hoping that some are useful. If not, uh, you can do as you wish. I arrived at Wednesday evening, but my luggage didn't arrive until Thursday. So those are the one that has us when you travel. Very enjoyable conference, had a lot of time to network with people. I'm now starting getting some emails for some of the uh, trades people that were there uh, asking about this and thank you for being in contact and making connections and hopefully going forward as our projects develop in these tents that they might be able to uh, be part of it. On Wednesday the 8th of June, I attended the uh, crime prevention in Nine Mile River, which was very interesting. Uh, the respectful workplace training here on the 9th. I, uh, for my own knowledge, I attended the tax sale on the 14th just to see how it did proceed and what the process were and uh, enjoyed it, uh, very eye-opening. On the 15th, I attended the CCOA uh, supper and luncheon at the Enfield Legion. I attended the car show on the 18th on that Saturday for Richie Gilby, a resident of East Hands. And some of the proceeds from the fundraising for that event were presented to some of the graduates today at Hans Seast Rural High Graduation. So uh, the object was to help out things in the community. And I think the graduates that received the small token of dollars were very appreciative. Audit committee on the 23rd for the library board and those uh, papers I'll be signing. And the municipality will be getting a copy of those from the director. On the 25th, along with uh, uh, Councillor Tingley, attended the Lower Selm Historical Society grand opening. John A. McDonald was there, and they also read a letter, a nice letter from Councillor Rhino, who couldn't attend, which was uh, very appreciative. Attended the federal announcement on the 27th for Shuby River Park. Very impressed with the design, and uh, I think the residents will really enjoy once it's up running this fall. The library board meeting was yesterday, and from the meeting, uh, Councillor Perry is now the second vice president, and I'm staying on as the chair for another year. And today at graduation, there was 171 graduates from Hans East, and they are our future. I sent off an email to Public Works to Devin Pinks, uh, Robin and John M. McDonald for the paving of Elmwood Drive. It was a surprise Monday to see the trucks on Endale. And they started around 12 and they were finished in six hours and did a fine job. And I also see the director, so he would know that uh, Elmwood and is finished right to the end and, and it's very nice to drive on. And those are all, and thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. OK, 
Councillor Hamm. Thank you, Madam Warden. I just have three things. I uh, presented a certificate to Alex and Joyce Lumpstons for their 65th wedding anniversary on the 1st of June and also attended the uh, crime prevention thing on June 8th. And I had the honor of uh, presenting a certificate of recognition for multiple years of service for uh, the Milford Fire Department. 80 years they've been in existence. And uh, that's quite a milestone for, uh, for a rural community. So um, that would be it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Deputy Ward. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just missed uh, one item that, uh, uh, thank you for the condolence, uh, for the hand clapping for the director's position. The first meeting is September the 15th, 13th to the 15th in Alberta. And uh, so that's on September 8th and 7th and 8th, there are virtual meetings for two days to get prepared for the 13th and 15th. So it seems like it'll be a busy, a busy time, but hopefully I'm up to the task. I'm sure you are, Deputy Warden. Councillor Eisner. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, just went over to uh, Fire Hall. They made a donation for the boys going over to Europe on their competition. It was nice to see them there. I uh, went down to the uh, George Horn sign breaking behind the Legion there. Uh, there's quite a few people there. And, uh, probably stayed and ate too much cake. It was nice on the way up here tonight. It was nice to see all three fields were really been all used, all different age groups. It's amazing how much people really do the, use the ball field. So it's nice to see that they're still working on. The, they want to put a a base underneath the sign. They want to do like a more permanent thing for uh, like plants. Flowers. I thought that was nice. Anyways, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Garden Cole. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, June has been a busy month. Uh, let's see what I've got here. I went to the Respectful Workplace Workshop as well, I attended that. Also attended the CCOA stakeholders meeting. Um, which was a, a great event uh, to see some of the um, clients that they have participating in the uh, in it as well as their families. So it was very nice. Um, went to the crime prevention open house uh, presented by the RCMP at the Nine Mile River Hall. It was very informative, and I really encourage residents to come out to those, uh, take advantage of those opportunities because they have so much great information uh, to pass on to us. I went to the uh, George B. Horn Memorial uh, sign unveiling as well, and uh, there was it was very well attended. And baseball, actually, fastball is alive and well in uh, in East Hans. Baseball, okay, baseball, alive and well in East Hans. Um, I went to the uh, HERH graduation this afternoon. Uh, it was my privilege to uh, to be there with the 171 grads and pass out an award, the Dr. Snow Award, to a uh, deserving recipient. Um, at this time, I just want to uh, speak to all the uh, grads who have had unprecedented adversity in their high school years. Hopefully, uh, that yes, that no group will ever have to go through the adversity that they have gone through. But, um, you know, they bounced back this year and they've uh, come through it relatively unscathed. And I wish them every success uh, in their future endeavors and a safe and, uh, and, and happy summer. Um, as well, I just want to mention also the... Um, in earlier this month, the Enfield Volunteer Fire Department did go to Hanover, Germany to compete in the extraction uh, competition. And they actually placed fourth, which is, uh, which is awesome. And I was wondering if we might be able to send them a letter of rec recognition in their, uh, in their achievements. As well, I have one more thing. And that's regarding, I've been getting some calls lately about the uh, development site at, I believe it's 432 Highway 2. Uh, the site that's um, 
has the fence around it. The development has been very slow going or not at all. And although they do have the fence around it, they are leaving the gates open. Uh, I did notice tonight that uh, either one or both of their gates are typically open all the time. I'm getting calls about it. Uh, we did reach out to them and they, uh, they were going to, uh, to fix it tomorrow, but tomorrow doesn't seem to come. We've reached out to them numerous times over, over the past months since the fall. I was wondering what our next uh, course of action is in the event that it is, is left open again. Um, through you, Madam Warren, I, I don't think we should discuss enforcement action in open council, but there are enforcement, enforcement measures that could be taken that are stronger than just requests. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Garden Cole, did you want to make a motion about a, a letter of recognition? Yes, I do. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we send the Enfield Volunteer Fire Department a letter of recognition for their achievements at the International Extraction Competition. Second. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. Is there any discussion? Present. Questions been called? And the motion is passed unanimously. Anything further, Councillor? Uh, just one more thing, and that's that I attended the uh, Truro Federal Boundary uh, Commission hearing earlier in the month. It was very well represented by uh, the residents and, and everyone in, uh, in the municipality of East Hants. And I found the commission members to be very personable, and you know they really seemed to uh, get where we were coming from. Uh, Cody Blois put an excellent um, uh, he, a speech together. He was very well prepared, offered them some options, and hopefully um, they, will, uh, they will see it see it our way. So, and that's it for me. Thank you. Councilor Rhino. Mm, I, too, attended the training course here at the uh, Municipal Office in early in June. Uh, June the 17th, I had the pleasure of presenting a 90th birthday certificate to uh, a longtime resident of Maitland who now resides in Parkland Estates, uh, Ms. Jean Hines, who are very well appreciated of that, had a great conversation. And last evening, I had the uh, pleasure of presenting uh, Dr. J.T. Snow uh, a bursary to a deserving student. Uh, it was uh, great like everyone else. It was great to be back in person graduations, and I think they really enjoyed it. And uh, it was, uh, it uh, brings back a lot of memories when you go back to uh, uh, Hans North, uh, and uh, where a couple of us here have uh, gone to school and graduated from. So uh, to see the youth walking across, it uh, kind of makes you feel a little little old so I hid my hearing aids that night so anyway now they're not that's uh, that's it for district five. Oh, just one more thing I just wanted to make sure staff knows that I am continually getting calls on roosters or not roosters I will take that back chickens guinea hens and now it's getting into other animals that are roaming the streets and I continually getting that and uh, I can't I am looking forward to when the zoning thing comes to try to deal with issues like that. Thank you. Okay, that concludes business from councillors. Uh, before we go further, um, we need to go back to the district recreation grants and that particular motion. I'm not sure if we need to rescind the whole motion, I believe, and remake the motion with the correct uh, districts in it. Shirley's going to bring it up. In the change that we made to the court, was it the quarter minor, minor baseball yes. ones? We, we got it wrong. Um, no, it's the Enfield Lions Club one that we got wrong. So we don't have a number for this motion yet that we just passed to rescind, rescind it. So I would be looking for a motion from someone to rescind the... Uh, Parks, Rec, and Culture uh, 
funding intake motion. And if we rescind that, then someone to move the corrected motion. Uh, Councillor. Oh, I had Councillor Garden call on. I want to speak. Okay. So. I just thought you might want me to. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at, I just want to confirm before we go any further with this, that it is District 1 and District 2 that are dividing and not District 1 and District 10 that are dividing um, the Enfield Elmsdale District Lions Club roofing project? CAO? Uh, three, Madam Chair, that is correct. The motion that was made at committee was that this project would be split between districts one and districts two. And the prior report showed this as district 10 and district two, the prior motion that's being, that's being rescinded now. This is the correct motion. So then, so, it, so then district 10 is not having any part of the district 10 project. Right, that was the motion at committee. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Rhino. All right, so this is the correct motion? That is. Yeah. My, my apologies to council for the incorrect district numbers. Okay, so I'm going to read the motion in its no, entirety. No, we need to rescind the first motion. I thought it was. No, we haven't done that yet. We haven't voted yet. Oh. We need someone to move. Oh, Councillor Green moved to rescind the motion. Do we have a seconder? Second, right? Seconded by the Deputy Warden. Question. All those, okay, we'll go to the vote. Need one more, okay, the motion is passed unanimously. Now we're looking to replace that motion with this one, Councillor Rhino. All right, here we go, round two. Move that council approve district recreation funding 2022-2023 intake number two, based on a discussion as follows. Lions Memorial Park Society, $2,730, just from district two. $2,270 from District 3 for a total of $5,000. Uniankin District Legion Branch 165, uh, $5,000 District 8, $5,000 District 9, thank you very, very much, for a total of $10,000. Quarter Area Minor Baseball Association, $3,889.50 from District 1. $3,889.50 from District 7, $7,779 from District 10 for a total of $15,557. Enfield, Elmsdale, and District Lions Club, $2,963 from District 1, $2,963 from District 2 for a total of, total of $5,926. I don't do think... we have a seconder? Uh, as chair of the committee, I do so. Or I move this motion. We seconded by Councillor Hebb. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. Motion is passed unanimously. Now, folks, we have left on the agenda an in camera item. I know we're past the scheduled hour of adjournment. Um, being mindful of that, um, I'm asking if folks are willing to extend the meeting to cover this in-camera session. And I would anticipate it would take no longer than 30 minutes at the most. So. Okay. So perhaps before we do that, would you like a five-minute break to... Yeah. Give folks time to stretch their legs. So we'll say maybe six minutes. We'll come back at 920. <laughs>
Are we good to go? Okay, folks, um, call our meeting back to order. I would report that we met in camera to discuss a land issue as well as a staffing issue. Uh, direction was given to staff in camera. No motions are coming forward from that uh, in-camera session. So I would be looking to set the date and time of the next council meetings as outlined on your agenda. Someone prepared to move those. So moved. Moved by Councillor Green, mm -hmm. seconded by the Deputy Warden. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Questions been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Now I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Rhino, seconded by Councillor Green. All those in favor? Contrary, motion is carried, we are adjourned.